Hello everybody and welcome back to LMM and if you're enjoying what you're seeing on the chat at the moment how about giving this video a like and maybe subscribing to the channel to help us grow and perhaps even check out our Patreon. Today we return for episode 5 of the Building a Modular Railway Challenge and everything's getting a bit tense now because it's less than a week until this layout needs to be assembled at Statfold and some of us, well, some of us haven't even started our wiring yet. And this series is sponsored by our friends over at Grange and Hodder, who supplied us with all of the boards that you'll see in this series. They make an amazing variety of baseboards, which takes the stress and anxiety out of making a solid start for your model railway. So go check out the website. It's over in the video description and see some of the things that they make. This episode is also sponsored by our friends over at L Cut Creative, who make a simply stunning array of high detail kits for multiple of scales, including double O and N. They really do have to be seen to be believed are easy to put together and have a wonderful high level of detail just look at that so a big thanks for them for helping out with this project and go to their website to see the sheer variety of kits available and with that i guess i should do some wiring tighten and that and that so that's going to lead to a plug that i don't have here but then i've got to link that to the power that goes here and to that one to a plug in that far corner over there. Unlike some of my companions, my wiring setup was rather complex. I had both a red and a black wire to deal with, which basically was going to run from one end of the board to the other, going to my droppers in the middle. And that was about the length of how complex my wiring was. And that I was pretty happy with, because it meant I was able to deal with it pretty quickly. Now, because wire is all springy, it's not quite where I wanted it to be, so I'm going to have to get the glue gun out glue these in position before I can work out the spur that goes from that to that and then to the thing there. Now if any of you are electrical engineers I suggest you look away now to save yourself an aneurysm because this is not the way that you should do wiring. In fact the amount of flack I've got off Charles for doing it like this is uh, well excessive. This is not the way to do it. I stress that but in times of need this has worked quite well. And it allowed me to know how much wire I needed to do my next section. And then I could connect up my droppers and connect it to my next chock block. Because I'm not a complete Philistine and was at least using chock block so I could check my connections. With a length found, I could do the rest of my wiring and route it to the other side of my board. So I now had my three droppers, the one at each end and the one in the middle, connected up and two spurs going ready for the awaiting plugs. So there we go, that is the wiring complete. That runs off to the banana plug I haven't got, that comes all the way around there, comes down to this, goes to the feed in the track, goes there to the other feed of the track and disappears off to the other banana plug. Why did I do it like that and go all the way around? Uh, actually, I don't know. And with the wiring complete on the main layout, I figured I might as well make a start and get the 009 wired up as well. And as Charles had moaned so much about the way I'd done my wiring before, I decided to spite him. Just a little bit of glue, doing it in a I've cut this wire way too long, but I can trim that and make it better. So this feed will go to that, so I can disconnect it from that one, and then this is my main feed that powers everything. Now, I also have to come clean with you guys, because last time I lied, I said I'd got 009 working perfectly, and what I actually had was it shuttling from the scenic area to a short section of track either side of the scenic section and when I went to connect that short section of track up to the rest of the loop it all went terribly terribly wrong so here we go again take that one off take that one off take that one off that one came off right hopefully this time it's going to work behold my devastation of failed attempts to make the bit of railway go from this bit to that bit or that bit I've been playing with this until I got light this morning. I still can't make it work. I'm not saying I've made mistakes by doing this, but I've made terrible, terrible mistakes and I hate myself. What I'd ended up doing, dear viewer, is in my attempt to get it to all line up and be a continuous run, I'd made it worse. It's been a bit of a nightmare. I have made mistakes and now I'm very behind with the rest of the build. So there was only one viable option left. Devastation, break it apart, start again. So I haven't had it fail again, I've got bored of the system and decided to start disassembling and pulling things apart. What I'm going to do now is take one of these, which is just wide enough to take a bit of track, and install it just thus. Now if I install it just thus, 
it will be a straight bit connected so there'll be no additional pulling of angles or anything else silly to pull the track out of shape and then I can stick it down to this piece and it'll be stuck forever and then I can start manipulating it beyond that now I think that's clever so this is now going to go in there come through and be flush with that like so and come to here so I need to cut up that thing to go thus. But first I had to remove yet more of my baseboard to make room for the railway's new route. And then I could attach my new support and that's one side done. Excellent, so that will now give enough clearance for a train to come through there. Uh, we'll take a peg here and we'll put that down there and that will glue that like that. Right, new plan, coming together. Meanwhile, having continued to test clearances to the point of madness, Loss had suddenly realised what a massive project he had and how little time he had left. I might need some help. I know who's called. Larry! Yep. <sighs> yep. Away. And having been released from the shed where Loz keeps him, Larry was put to work. I have been tasked to try and make some platform walls out of a piece of... Hello. Task made some platform walls out of a piece of brick. Which involves cutting very carefully along these lines while not being distracted by anyone. Don't film now, it's going wrong. And speaking of things that were going wrong. So I've cut this to fit there. That's going to go on there. You can see I've scored that, ready to cut that to be the right shape. Then that's going to go between there and be a much steeper incline between the two of these. But hopefully that's going to work a bit better than it did before. Um, so I just need to make a couple of little modifications and then we're there. Now this is an abomination, absolutely complete bodge. But what I've done is by using one piece there to strengthen there, one piece there to strengthen there, and then one piece bridging it, meaning that's strong. And then I've repeated the process here. So that's strong, supported there, supported there. Now this was not my original plan, and it's very much starting to look like bodge, mostly because it needs to work now, because I'm running out of time. Next stage is to add some glue to this, reposition this onto the new line thus, and so it'll be there, leave this end bit here flexible, to go, it's gonna be tight. Meanwhile, Tag was also doing some track work, although he was significantly further along and doing his final assembly. He was so confident in his time that he was either now starting to weather the track. Whilst the track in there was drying, I made a start on the joiners for the power. So I'm going to cut this into two halves so I can have my black and yellow feeders that will run the layout and the auxiliary power, which I don't need. So it'll just be this one and that one, which will just run power from that corner straight across to that corner. So I haven't scored and measured my holes. I've made one over here. And uh, so I've got these little doohickeys here. Quite simple, really. All we do is unscrew all of this gubbins. So that bit that bit and that and then we take this bit and we put it into the hole like that make sure it's coming on the other side and then we just reassemble it so we'll put that on collar over the top a metal washer the piece that we'll eventually connect our wire to and finally a bolt onto that to do the whole thing up and whilst I played with the electrics, in another part of the country, Loz was getting to grips with one of the biggest parts of his layout, the workshop. Okay, that should be that. And with that, the workshop is in. This is a beautiful kit from Elka, and they were very kind to me, and actually modified one of their goods sheds to turn it into this sort of workshop, so it's a little bit wider than an engine shed would otherwise be. Um, and then from that, I've been a little crafty and how I built it, which means beautiful and but oh no, what happens if I need to get access to it? Well I can simply take the roof off and then I can take this little bit of framing out. And now I can access inside it. Alternatively, I can take this section of wall out, which yes, I still need to do the windows that they're painted and they're there ready to go. I just need to cut them out, attach them to the glazing and get them in, but uh, all in time. Um, 
And now I can put the roof back on something like that and then put the roof itself on. And now we have a complete shed, but with a viewing window so that people can see what's in there and going on from the viewing side of the module. I don't know if I'll actually do that or not on the show, but well, I think it's cool at least. I too had moved away from the track. So one thing I have noticed is my little test locomotive here is a, a little reluctant to do anything. There we go. So I think that what I'm going to do is it's also refuses to go backwards. Is I'm going to take that off, and what I'm actually going to do is replace this with a Kato chassis because these little things are brilliant. That's so much better. Let's take this off and see if we can put this body onto this chassis. Well, there's the problem, it's missing the contact on the front. Hmm. However, if I just chop a little bit out of the front of that chassis, that might just fit. Cue getting out the twirling tool of destruction. And it looks like our patient survived its surgery. Okay, so conversion complete. And I've ruined it. Following testing, it's just time to add a little bit of glue and put the 009 coupler on and, and try and get that straight. And as I was trying to get stuff to run, so was Nick. After a mammoth four hours, yes, four hours, I've managed to replace the point where the loco is sitting and diagnose and fix this feed by replacing that switch. It was faulty, so it wasn't my track feed or my soldering at all, it was that. But now we can do this. It all works, apart from this one stretch here, which, as you can see, isn't attached. So, I best get on with fixing that in another time. And then it's on to scenery, because we haven't got long left. Leaving Nick to carry on play, I, I mean testing his layout, I wonder what Loz is up to. I'm cutting out windows for the workshop. It's incredibly riveting entertainment, I'm sure. I assume there's some sort of action-y music being played in the background of this shot. OK, cue the music. So how many windows have you done? Nearly two. How many are there in the workshop? One, two, three, four. Meanwhile, aside from being impressed with how high Loz could count, I was attempting to finish my 009. What I have here is a piece of end gauge railway that comes round and is glued to about this point here. From here on, any bit it is flexible to meet this bit here, which is flexible. So all I need to do is encourage that round like that. It's going to be very tight um, to meet this one. Dave was also working on his track. But like Tag, he was working on detailing and weathering it rather than trying to make it work. He was even going to the length of painting each chair individually for a weathered look. Now that's dedication. Now I would do it too if I could actually make mine, you know, work. So here we go. It is the moment of no return. If it doesn't work now, I've wasted a week, in fact more than a week, of mucking around with this stupid idea of pulling it apart, relaying it, when I, I just should never have started it. So, will it go? It <laughs> 
actually works. And leaving me to continue my rigorous testing, let's see how Loz is getting on with his windows. No, halfway there. It's only been six hours. And whilst he was occupied, he tasked Larry to build the platform walls. And so he told me to lay them down like that. A nice flat edge. We're then going to get some matchsticks. And we're going to get some super glue on said matchsticks and then stick that very carefully on to there. By this point, I'd run into a problem. Yep, due to my rerouting the railway, it now didn't fit in three separate places. So that meant getting out the magical board destroying tool and once again, butchering my poor baseboard. Meanwhile, Charles had called in the cavalry and got Tom to come help him paint some of his baseboard. And with two of them at it, they made sterling progress and very quickly got the entire job done. And by the time they'd finished, I'd finished butchering my baseboard and was ready for loaded gauging runs. Well, it has taken an exceedingly long time, but the 009 is now fully functional and works as I intended. The downside is I am now two, maybe three weeks behind where I wanted to be. Um, in fact, everything's coming rather tight for the getting it all done for the show. So uh, it's now time for mass panic. And whilst I panicked, Loz was still cutting windows out. <sighs> 19, wait. So, I have been given the task of putting structural reinforcement to the side of the station so that hopefully when we put it in place it doesn't just kind of keel over. Um, so anyway, this is putting matchsticks up the side, which is what the station's going to sit on, and then gluing little bits of matchstick onto there to make a frame to hopefully a bit stronger. And speaking of structure, it was time for me to do some structural engineering of my own. These strips of card might not look like much, but these are what are going to form the skeleton of my scenic area. It's all going to get covered in several layers of papier mache, but this is a turning point because I'm now starting to work on the scenic area with, you know, not a huge amount of time to go. And this took a very long time to make the lattice work, but soon enough, it was complete the skeleton to my landscape. And whilst I'd actually been achieving something, Charles too had been constructing a component. This was the board in which all of his lights and switches are going to go for the main control module. And he was getting it laser cut. And that is something very cool. That is cutting edge technology, literally. And watching the machine just burn out the holes and mark everything was just a fascinating thing to watch. And also it means that everything is exactly as he planned it in his diagram and it's all far better than he would ever have made using his own hands and tools. And speaking of using one's hands, I was now finally starting to put the papier-mâché down and create my landscape. It was hugely exciting seeing this landscape that I'd planned slowly become manifest. And obviously it was taking a very very long time and this was the first of many many layers that I was going to have to put on to give the board some actual strength and meanwhile Loz was still working on windows so now that I've cut out all 7364 of these windows the next thing is to glaze them now the easiest way to do this as far as I can tell is I have just a sheet of clear plastic I don't know if you'll probably see that and then I'm using glue and glaze, which is a special glazing glue that dries crystal clear, according to the label anyway. Um, we'll see how that turns out. So I'm just taking each window, putting a few dabs of glue on it and stuffing it on the plastic. 
once it's dry, I will then cut around the windows and hopefully we'll have glazed windows. While Loz gets on with other bits and pieces, he's left me to paint the side walls for the station. So what I'm doing currently is I'm using some of this to slow down how quick paint dries, along with an off-white paint to be the mortar in the middle. <coughs> um, I am paint, I've been told to paint it on quite thick like this, and then we wipe it away with a tissue. And having wiped that away, <coughs> gets mortar lines filled and a little bit across the bricks to weather it, apparently. You know what? Based on the technique that Larry had been using, I did not expect that to come out looking that good. That's a really easy technique for a very effective... That's brilliant! And as I finish applying my first coat of papier-mâché, that's where we're going to leave this episode. So join us next time to see how we get on, because by this time next week, it will all be over. So things are getting right up to the line. Will the layouts be finished? Will it all go together? Only time will tell. And if you have enjoyed this one, how about clicking over there for the first episode where we outlay the whole project, or down there for the last episode, or over there for the episode before that. And we hope to see you guys over at the Statfold Barn Model Railway Show. You can click there to see what it was like last year and get a flavour for what's to come. Hope to see you guys there and see you next time. Let me know in the comments below if you think it's going to make it. Ta-ra!